everyone, please welcome VP of Business Technology at Slack, Stephen Franchetti. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Frontiers, and welcome to our Opportunity Track. I'm Stephen Franchetti. I'm the Vice President of what we call Business Technology at Slack, and Business Technology is really our version of IT at Slack. And I get to take the coveted position to be on stage directly after Serena Williams. She was fantastic, I have to say, wasn't she? Awesome, fantastic, fantastic. So if you think about our opportunity track today, we have a lot of action-packed sessions and topics scheduled for you over the next two days. And it's really targeted towards IT leaders and admins looking to get the most value out of their Slack implementations. And we actually have seven sessions scheduled. You're going to be hearing from product leaders. You're going to be hearing from other customers about their journey to drive business value from their Slack implementation. The whole goal of this is we want you to leave at the end of the two days with some tactical tips and best practices that you can actually take back and apply to your own Slack implementation within your organization to drive value. So a lot of exciting sessions and topics that we have planned here over the next couple of days. But this session is about exceeding your business goals with Slack. So what I'd like to do is, is kick things off with a bit of a discussion around the evolution of IT and how the industry is demanding IT play a different role moving forward. And then in the context of exceeding your business goals, we've actually been thinking a lot about this topic of, of value. And we've actually come up with a, a value framework that we've been using internally in our own business at Slack. And we started to share it more broadly with our customers. And it starts to articulate how you can apply Slack to your different business areas to really drive tangible business results. And then we'll round things out with a bit of a customer spotlight. I have two fantastic Slack customers who are going to come up on stage and join me. And you'll hear about their customer journey in the form of HSBC and Symantec and how they're using Slack to drive to their business objectives. So let's jump in. If I think about the, the evolution of IT really over the last 40 or 50 years, IT's role has shifted dramatically over that period. And we find ourselves now roughly in the fourth era of computing, as defined by the different technologies that we've used over the course of time. And as we step into this era of mobile and cloud, there's various themes at play in the industry that lead us to believe that IT needs to take on a different role moving forward. So we've seen the consumerization of IT. Our expectation about what a great user experience looks like is actually set in our personal lives and our social, social lives with the technologies and the tools that we use in our personal lives. And of course, we expect that as we step into the workplace, we're going to see the same type of simple intuitive experience. But that's not always the case as we know with enterprise software. We've also seen the proliferation of software. So in every aspect of our life, we're using software, we're using technology. And if you look at how that translates into the enterprise, it actually creates a lot of complexity. I think about our own business inside of Slack. We have over 400 pieces of software, SaaS providers that we use today to run our own business. And I've worked certainly in organizations in the past where that number has been well over 1,000. So that actually creates a lot of complexity. How do you make sense of that and build an architecture that will allow you to run and scale your business as you move forward? And of course, we continue to see dynamic and dispersed organizations. Gone are the days of the rigid hierarchical structure. We're seeing agile teams come together from across the organization to get work done. And then, of course, an increased demand for agility. So the rate and pace of change in business is only going to get faster as we move forward. So as you look at these trends that are at play in the industry, it demands IT take on a different role moving forward. And we like to describe that role as the master architect. So really stepping into this role of, as we understand this multi-cloud environment that we live in today, 
how do we bring together all of these different SaaS providers, all of these different systems, in an overall machine that makes sense to run your business, an overall set of business processes that make sense to run your business, and ultimately an overall experience that makes sense to run your business. And so IT needs to play the lead role around painting that vision and bringing that architecture to life. But it's not just technology for technology's sake. It's really having this relentless focus on driving tangible business results. And really what I mean by that is, how do you use technology to create new business models? How do you use technology to change fundamentally the way you operate within your organization to drive to those tangible business results? But then if you look at these trends at play in the industry, they actually don't make it easy for us to make that shift to move to this master architect role. They actually create a lot of complexity within the IT landscape. There's more software and apps to manage. There's more diverse user experiences. There's just more choice out there. The good news is, though, that we think that Slack can play a key role as part of that architecture, really simplifying your IT landscape and creating that single pane of glass to bring together your existing software investment and also your workflows to create a simplified single experience inside of Slack but also bringing together the people, the information, and the tools you need to drive organizational alignment. And Stuart talked about organizational alignment and the importance of that this morning in the keynote. And certainly, we've seen this in our own business at Slack as we've grown. What's worked well for a company of 100 or 200 people from an organizational alignment perspective really starts to break down when you get to 1,000 people, 1,500 people, and beyond. So making sure that you have the tools and the technology in place to drive that organizational alignment becomes really important as you grow as an organization. So all of that said, what does that actually mean in, in practice? Right? How do we actually make this real? We've talked about the shifting role of IT, moving to the master architect, driving tangible business results, and the fact that Slack can play a key role in actually helping you, you get there. Well, what we've done is we've actually been thinking about this concept of value a lot internally. We've created a value framework we've been using on our own business, and we've started to share it more broadly with our customers. And hopefully, it allows you to think about how you might apply Slack to the different areas of your business to drive tangible business value. Now, we're not reinventing the wheel. Many of you may have seen uh, tools and frameworks like this in the past. The unique aspect of this particular framework is that we want you to think about how to use specific Slack features and also integrate Slack with your existing software landscape to drive to your business objectives. And we'll, we'll talk about that. And by the way, this is a tool that you can use at any point in your journey with Slack. If you're a new customer with Slack, if you're a tenured customer with Slack, you've had it in place for several years, we hope that you'll, you'll get use out of this value framework at any point in your, in your Slack journey. So there's five key components to the overall value framework. The first is about defining your end objective. How are you going to articulate value and what the objective is when you actually get there? Then it's about bringing together the cross-functional teams, identifying the partners that need to come together to get the objective implemented. And then having them actually set the solution strategy around all of this. What are the components that need to be in place to help you get to that end objective? And then what role does Slack play in all of this? And we hope you can use Slack to actually accelerate the goal that you have and actually get into that end objective. And then last but not least, once you're there, how do you actually measure the results? And then go back around and continue to optimize that solution so you're continuously hitting your business goals as you move forward. So what I thought we could do is use a, an example really to illustrate the framework. And this is a real live example of how we use Slack within our own business, within our, our sales organization. So using the framework then, our goal here was to drive top line business growth within our, our, own, our own organization, within our own business. And you can imagine our sales team is really laser focused on this. 
If you look at the context of our business, we're in this hyper-growth period. We continue to see increasing deal size and complexity. It seems like on a weekly basis, there's new large global customers coming into our, our business, coming into our portfolio, which is a good problem to have. To adapt to that customer demand, we're also growing rapidly the sales organization. But it's essential that they have the tools, the processes, and systems in place to be able to spend time really focusing on the customer's needs and spend less time on the administrative associated with managing their book of business. So that was the goal that we had. Then you look at the, the partners that needed to come together to get this done across sales, across our business technology team, and the supporting cast in the form of finance and legal to put together our strategy to get to that end goal of driving top-line growth. And there's three components to that strategy. It was about accelerating leads. So once we've identified qualified leads, how do we get them into our funnel as quickly as humanly possible? It was also about how do we get to forecast accuracy in our business? Important for any business, and we're no exception in that regard. But we needed predictability and accuracy in our overall sales forecast. And then finally, it was about maintaining lead or deal momentum at critical stages in an account's life cycle. And this was really about how do we compress the approval cycles associated with a, a particular deal. And what role did Slack have to play in all of this? Well, we actually brought together three components to make this a reality. Slack, troops, and also leveraging our existing investment in Salesforce, our CRM, of course. And for those of you who are not familiar with troops, it's an app that's available as part of our app directory. You can download it, load it, apply it to your Slack instance, and it will actually automate your sales processes and create a much more productive experience for your sales team. And that's essentially what we did here. So using the example of lead acceleration, we used the combination of Slack and troops. And now we have a situation where when a qualified free lead is identified, or qualified lead is identified, we actually raise that in real time and send a notification inside of Slack to the account exec. They have all the contextual information they need to be able to take action against that particular lead and move it forward into our sales pipeline into the funnel, which is fantastic. You compare that to the old process of going into Salesforce and trawling through reports and data to manually identify those leads. So this has rapidly accelerated our leads process. From a forecasting perspective, I'm sure all of you who are aware who have worked with sales, your sales forecast is only as good as the data that you have in your CRM and how up to date that information is, how timely and accurate that information is. And it's not the favorite thing of the account execs to be spending a lot of time in Salesforce updating status of accounts and updating their forecast. So now what we've done is we've driven that process into Slack and at critical portions or events that happen through the life cycle of a deal, we're sending notifications out to the account exec so they can just go in and, and quickly inside of Slack, update the status of the account that flows into our overall forecast. And now we have near real-time forecasting going on within our sales team, which is fantastic. And then last but not least, it was about deal momentum. And this for us was about accelerating these complex deals around the approval cycle. And you can imagine in any organization, the number of people that need to approve these deals up through the sales management hierarchy, you know, up to our CFO and our executive team need to get engaged and involved depending on the size of the deal. And what we're able to do here is actually move this into a channel. So as these deals come through, we can get eyes on those deals, all those people that need to approve, and actually move them forward as quickly as possible and get them back to the customer, which is the main objective around this. So you look at the results that we've received um, on this, and this is some of the feedback that we've gotten from the people who are actually using this on a day-to-day -day basis, our account execs. And you can see that they're actually spending much more time focused on the customer and less time on the admin work. But there's also some tangible results, measurable results. And these are business impacting results that we've seen as well. 21% faster cycle times associated with our sales process, which is fantastic. And you look at how that breaks down across the three components that we've talked about. Faster lead response time, faster deal approval time, and 100% increase in overall forecast accuracy, which is fantastic. 
So we've run through this fairly quickly to illustrate the framework. But hopefully, that gives you a sense of how we're using Slack within our own business, within sales, to drive tangible business results. But don't take it from me. What I'd now like to do is kind of switch things up a bit and have you hear from our, our customers. And we're going to have two fantastic Slack customers join us up here on stage. We're going to start with HSBC. And they're going to take us through how they're really changing the face of online banking and using Slack as part of that journey. So I'm going to invite Cheryl Rosell up here on stage to join me. Welcome, Cheryl. All right, so Cheryl, thank you so much for joining us. I know you just flew in last night from, from the UK. I hear you're trying to escape Brexit. Yes, I came as far away as Brexit as I possibly <laughs> could. Um, I didn't expect somebody to ask me on stage about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm allowed to say these things because I'm from the UK as well. So we, could, we could lament together later <laughs> on. Um, but, but I know, you know HSBC is one of the largest banks on the planet. So you have a kind of a large, complex, regulated industry that you, you're dealing with. Tell us a little bit about HSBC and, and your role at HSBC. Okay, so I run the global team, which is the digital tooling, monitoring, and collaboration team, which is where Slack fits into my portfolio. Um, we're part of the retail, wealth, and banking sector of HSBC. Um, digital evolved as a proof of concept to move away from monolithic applications and websites, breaking down into microservices um, and APIs, allowing us to um, deliver to our customers in a, a, a greater frequency. Right, that, that's fantastic, that's fantastic. So, so it must be no small challenge in a highly regulated banking industry that you find yourselves in to, to move quickly towards mobile and digital. I know that's really what you're focused on. What was the online banking landscape like when you first started at HSBC, and, and what were some of the key objectives of your team? So back in 2016, when I joined the bank, um, digital was still in its infancy. We were um, figuring out how we could deploy at scale and um, greater velocity to our customers with new customer journeys. So co new customer journeys are things like um, being able to cash a check via a mobile app or open a, new, um, a, a, open a new bank account. All these features that you used to walk into branch. Um, you alluded to it earlier with the customization, uh, sorry, the consumerization of IT. Mm -hmm. That's kind of key to what we were trying to do within the bank. Mm -hmm. our, customers, what our customers' needs are changing. Um, the evolution of technology, keeping up with you know, other banks and keeping up with uh, mobile apps and web apps that our customers can consume in a different way was key to the objective of the bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. So, so if you think about um, your role, and I know you've been in the bank for, for a period of time now, um, but as I understand, as we were chatting about this before, you, you pretty much have to start from scratch and grow your team from, from nothing um, to meet your objectives. Can you share a little bit about how you went about that and some of your key partnerships to meet that goal? Yeah, sure. So back in 2015, when we started uh, the digital program, um, there was just one individual. The team's around 5,000 strong now. So that's a huge amount of growth in a very short period of time. So we not only had to evolve people and processes and the tooling around that to complement each other, um, but we had to bring in ad agile methodology. We had to build cross-functional teams so that we can start delivering products. We needed marketing. We needed engineering. Um, and we needed this in on a global scale. So this wasn't just one location, um, digital is, is, is globally spread. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, I mean, that's incredible. I can't even imagine going from like one person to 5,000 people within a relatively short time frame, which is kind of staggering. It still blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's incredible growth. And now that the team's in place and hopefully firing on all cylinders, um, how did you actually bring them together to form the strategy and move this forward? So it's all about processes and people and technology, and those three complement each other. Um, as you mentioned earlier, you know, with the, the consumerization of, of IT, um, IT is evolving. IT is no longer part of the business. IT has become the business. Mm -hmm. So we've, we had to change and we had to adapt, and we had to bring in um, technology to complement that as well. Mm -hmm. So not only were we building out the, the people and growing the people at, school, skill, uh, at, at scale, but we had to onboard people. We had to support them with new technology. Um, and and the kind of talent that we were, we were um, hiring as well, they had high demands of the technology, the CICD mm -hmm. platform that we were building, collaboration tools like Slack. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to build technology to underpin the processes and the people that we were building at scale. 
Yeah, and it's, it's, it's kind of what we've been talking about this morning. It's kind of the shift of IT to really play that master architect role, bring those technologies together and focus on, on those business results. And you touched on the importance of the consistent experience for customers and those customer journeys. Now, can you talk to us about some of the things you've built to support this and, and where does Slack play a role in all of this? So um, I've got a great example. Some of our teams um, are quite mature in their engineering processes. Um, so they decided to build some bots. Um, and we've integrated these bots into some of our third party tools with our CI CD using Jenkins um, and then Jira for our, tick, uh, for our tracking and our, our bug tracking. Um, and they built this pretty neat bot that allowed them to do automatic deploys, which was, has never been heard of within the bank. Um, deploying frequently um, with zero interaction was a huge huge achievement for the, for the bank. So um, one of our engineering teams built this, this cards bot, um, and it was, it was massive for us as an organization. So we've tried to reutilize that cards bot, and we started to get teams to share their ideas. Um, we use Slack as a, as a method for teams to start working with each other. Um, teams work very much independently because we are a distributed global organization. You've got pockets of teams that didn't even know about each other's existence, um, that are coming together and working together and sharing ideas and collaborating over Slack. So they're now sharing code with each other. Mm -hmm. Then we've now created a channel recently, which we've actually encouraging teams to share some of their bots mm. so we can replicate some of those good ideas and those innovative um, programs across the, the globe. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. It's actually something we hear from a lot of our customer stories around you start with an objective and then there's all these other kind of splinter uh, benefits that come out that weren't originally intended, like people helping other people within the context of Slack and all of that great stuff. So that, that's fantastic to hear. And so we've talked about the front of house release team um, and, but that's only half of your strategy, as, as we've, we've chatted about before. Uh, the other key components of your strategy, I know, is around your platform team. How do they use Slack, and what does that mean for your business? So it's an area very close to my heart, because when I joined the bank back in 2015, as I mentioned, the platform was very much in its infancy. So we had to build out the support process from our platforms from scratch. When I first started, I said, how, we, how do we deal with incident management? How do we deal with problems that we have with our platforms? Um, to my horror, I heard that we had a couple of engineers that were manning a, 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 an inbox that people would email if they had a problem with the platform. Now, this isn't scalable. So um, I brought about bringing in a service desk tool that we could use for incident management. Then we had to train our engineers to use the incident management where they used to um, log in an email. We had to build out SLAs, KPIs. We had to build out an entire structure and get the teams on board with using that service desk as well. This was great until we realized that the team started to adopt the service desk in, in their masses. So we were having a lot of duplicate calls where teams were seeing an issue with their, deliver, their, their development environment or their production environment, totally unaware that there was an entire organization out there having similar issues. So we had a lot of duplicate um, incidents that we had to address. Um, this was problematic with, for the support teams because how do you scale something that's so large with over, I think, 4,000 developers around the world. Um, trying to support these developers was, was problematic in this way. So um, we were having weekly meetings with the teams to address some of their issues where we would take, um, we'd take notes and then we'd come back to the team a week later and we'd say, right, this is what we're going to do about your problem. And trying to address this at scale is, is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So we turned some of those into virtual environments using Slack. So we created, uh, created a, a, a Slack channel where we could collaborate with our um, platform users. We could send announcements. We could talk to them. We could let them know about problems. And most of the time now, we let them know about problems before they're aware of them. Right. But also, those teams have started working together, and they can see synergy and the problems they're trying to, they're trying to resolve. Mm -hmm. So they start helping each other. And teams that never knew they existed around the globe have started to work together. It's been a really powerful tool for us to bring a globally disbanded group of people together into one place to have a singular conversation around some of the problems we're trying to address. And that's awesome. That's fantastic. And so if you think about all of that and kind of wrapping it all together, what does it mean in terms of measuring the value? So I know this was a mammoth task for you, you to take on and implement in what seems like a fairly quick time frame. Now that you've reached the end goal, how has it really impacted your business? 
So I think the biggest measurable for us is how many new customer journeys we deliver. Um, as I say, when we first started in 2017, we, uh, so, sorry, 2015, we delivered around new seven cu new customer journeys to HSBT retail consumers. Um, I think last year it was around um, 300 that we delivered, and to date we're pretty strong with consistently beating that record from last year. So these are new customer journeys that um, mean that we're able to deliver to our customers quicker and we're able to facilitate their needs a lot quicker the velocity of the teams is higher meaning that our customers uh, and our customer experience is uh, much enriched from what it was previously that's that's amazing that's amazing to hear and those those are really incredible results um, and it's great it's a great example of using technology to fundamentally change the way in which you operate and get to, to those objectives that you talked about so given all of that you've kind of reached the top of the mountain what's next for you absolutely not we've uh, we've gotten an entire range of mountains to climb <laughs> Um, we, we have other problems that we're trying to address. I think scaling at the size of HSBC is our biggest problem. Um, so we've got a cloud-first strategy that we're moving to, and we want um, tools like Slack to complement that. Um, we still have to scale out some of our, um, uh, some of our project, uh, projects and move them to the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, with a lot of automation that we can use with Slack and Slack bots, we're hoping that we can speed up that process. And the faster and more um, improvements we make to our customer base, which is our platforms, then the quicker we can deliver new customer features to our customers. So it's just the beginning. Right. That's fantastic. Well, listen, Cheryl, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. And again, thank you for flying in all the way from the UK last night pleasure. to be here with us. And it's great to hear about your fantastic Slack journey. So I'll let you go and deal with Brexit now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very right, much. Cheers. All right, then. So thank you again, Cheryl. And so switching gears, uh, I want to invite Semantic up onto the stage and hear from a, a diff completely different industry, uh, obviously focused on security and, and technology and all of that implies. So why don't you join me up on stage, Angela Borgi. Hey there. Angela, good to see you. See you too. Go ahead. All right, so in uh, full disclosure, Angela and I used to work together many moons ago back at Cisco, so it's great to be having a, uh, a reunion today. Thank you for inviting me, this is great. In front of several hundred of our closest friends, of course. Um, but great to see you again. And, and you've moved on from Cisco, and I know you've taken on a completely new role inside Symantec. So tell us a little bit about the company and, and what your role is. So first of all, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here and really share our story. So at Symantec, I'm a part of Symantec IT. I run a global organization, which is Accelerate Customer Experience. And really, our charter is to drive productivity and deliver exceptional user experience, right? So in the communication collaboration world, Slack's part of that portfolio. And what my team's done sort of behind the scenes really is to bring in Slack as a platform with enterprise grid and really consolidate disparate instances that we have to a point where we're actually growing the, the platform in different areas of the organization, different use cases, workflows, really innovation, uh, innovating and automating around Slack. Great, fantastic. And I know you're, you're very focused, and we've talked a lot about this this morning, and the changing role of IT and how you can really change things up and, and provide that better customer experience yeah. both internally and externally at Symantec. Can you talk about the end goal that you're really trying to achieve with your team? Absolutely. So uh, as most of you guys know, Symantec is a world leader in cybersecurity. Everything we do is with that mindset, right? An end-to-end -end experience in security. So globally dispersed team, 16,000 users across 85 countries. How do we bring them together, right? And all the IT professionals in this, uh, you know, in the audience will tell you, we are living in a world where IT budgets are diminishing day to day, right? How do you deliver the business growth, mm -hmm. but also, uh, you know, take some of the investments and reinvestment in bigger transformational activities? Mm -hmm. So that's where sort of we've landed with where Slack is helping us. Right, and I know there's a big focus on pit stop. So yeah, tell us a yeah, little, yeah. touch on pit stop yeah. a little bit. So as a part of that, uh, you know, IT is a services-led organization. So we have a, one of our 
um, uh, services called pit stop services. So if you think about it, it's a help desk, a supplement to help desk, but it's really in the world, uh, the changing world of help desk support, it's where you go in and you actually talk to a human. You, um, you know, you're locked out of your system, you need a laptop, your password's expired, whatever that might be, mm -hmm. you go in, get a solution. So our mantra really has been no tickets, no hassles, go get work done and then move back you know, to your full data and jobs. So we've been growing pit stops. We've got in our core large sites, we've got what we call the bigger pit stops. We have different flavors of it. We've got mobile pit stops. We've got express pit stops for smaller, medium-sized um, um, offices, if you will, around the globe. Mm -hmm. And then through that, I think what we've also discovered is uh, different use cases, to your point earlier about the splintering effect, right? We've started to discover that uh, the services asked for for doing exact support or mm -hmm. VIP concierge mm -hmm. support. So how do you really create a process and a, a tool that scales around all of that? Right, yeah, that's yeah. I know those, those uh, execs are pretty demanding when it comes to sport. Oh, I, uh, I, I feel you uh, I sympathize with your position. So, um, so you shared a little bit about the objective yeah. and, and where you're looking to head and pit stop, maybe some of the teams that have come together to, to make that reality. So if you think about the strategy, maybe some of the components you put in place to, to get there. So, so think about, uh, you know, I referred to earlier how uh, the budgets are diminishing and how do you drive unprecedented growth, right? So that was one of the objectives or strategies we put in place, but how do you focus on an unparalleled user experience while going into different alternate channels mm -hmm. of support, if yep. you will? Yep. Uh, think about what's happening in any industry today, in a service industry. Users are getting more comfortable in posting their questions on a Twitter or on a Reddit and asking questions mm -hmm. and the communities helping them. Mm -hmm. They would rather not pick up the fold and call anybody or talk to a human, right? So yeah. there's a whole industry flourishing around this. And that's what we really tried to replicate within Cement Tech. Mm -hmm. And how do we uh, make that sort of front end experience available? Uh, the other strategy in IT is about uh, developing our workforce. So one of the workforce strategies within my organization is we bring in early in career uh, employees. Uh, so they're, uh, you know, they've started, they want to get into the tech industry, we get them from diverse backgrounds, but you know, they are developing their career and looking at this stepping stone. So they're valued employees and learning technology, but hopefully in, you know, they're going to get out of there in a couple of years, go on to do bigger, better roles. So a lot of strategies really came together to drive our vision on this. Right, that, that's fantastic. And, and then, so if you think about all of that, um, you know, what certainly I'm most interested in it. <laughs> Where does Slack fit into the general scheme Absolutely. of things? And how does it help you drive forward yeah. with that? So, so, th so think about, you know, I mentioned a little bit about looking at another way to offer a service and support channel, mm -hmm. if you will. So we uh, launched a channel within Symantec called Ask the Pit Stop. Mm -hmm. It was as simple as that, uh, an online channel 24 by 7 manned by our pit stop folks. And this is, uh, you know, we launched it about three months ago. We've not, we're starting to roll this out across the organization but unprecedented growth. You're actually starting to see this community build out around, hey, I have a quick question for IT. How do I do this? I got locked out, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. And then there's people supporting them. We're using a lot of uh, cool emojis going, hey, somebody's looking at it. There's eyes on that, mm -hmm. or it's been solved. It's, uh, it's really a growing knowledge base where users can go in and, hey, somebody asked this question. Maybe I, you know, I need the answer to that. I want to open a case or what have you. Mm -hmm. So it's also changing the world of how our service desk uh, moves, right? So I do actually, you know, like I said, the swarming effect is a little bit different too. So we have a story here where, uh, think about a month ago, RSA, big cybersecurity conference mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, at uh, San Francisco, our CEOs there, we're sponsors, he and his staff are preparing all the press releases and a can of Coke goes on the laptop, it's fried. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our CEO puts in one call and it's like, we need a new laptop. 
and it really is the staff and the management they got together and you know the channel really helped us uh, create a new laptop you know get the data get it all set up and I think the hardest part here was to actually you know Sunday afternoon find somebody to drive it over to San Francisco right. so we're seeing starting to see these side benefits of how that community can grow right that's fantastic were you able to tell your CEO not to drink a can of coke on top of his <laughs> laptop in yeah the that's to come <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right that's right <laughs> so it sounds like you've been able to really scale the way you, you deliver service yeah. globally across semantic which is no mean feat I have to say what has this meant for your team more specifically? Sure. So, like, I think I mentioned, you know, we're, we're hiring early in career folks, right? But everybody wants a fulfilling career. We're building corporate, athlete, corporate athletes, right? This goes right to Serena's talk was, like, you know, talk was, mm -hmm. like, so great where, you know, it's, it's about the team. It's how do, you know, how do you become part of that team? So we're trying to do the same thing. Uh, think about it. These folks have come in. They live with that technology for two years, and they become experts in other areas that you couldn't think of, right? Yeah. So whether it's Oracle or the ERP or the mm -hmm. databases, they become experts in that. So, you know, they then, you know, they're looking for rotations and we make that available whether they do that through a, I think you're seeing some use cases of event support mm -hmm. helping out with unified communications. We've got exec support that, you know, sit on our exec uh, staff that, you know, help out. Mm -hmm. So it's really helped us grow as a team as well. That's fantastic. And again, one of those side benefits. Yeah, the core absolutely, yeah. Mission just to really invest in your team, which, which is awesome. Um, so, if, if I think about measuring now, so all of that coming together and the specific measurements that, that you guys put in place or some of the benefits that you saw that really impacted your business. Right. So, you know, we're still tracking some of this, but, you know, I'm super excited where we've got savings really, right, you know, hard like top line savings on the uh, from a service our outsource service desk, mm -hmm. we've uh, you know reduced our footfall traffic if you will into the pit stop, mm -hmm. and really I think uh, what the team is now doing is looking at further what 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 else lies ahead mm -hmm. right? So we're looking into a native language bot that. Uh, today we're expecting people to come to ask the pit stop, mm -hmm. but this bot can be in any channel. Anytime we notice a question on IT, the bot's going to help sort of just transfers this and, you know, on more automation. So I'm looking to more, again, this is about simplifying. It's about innovating around what you have so that my staff and the budget, we can, you know, we, we can build better things out of this. That's amazing. And it's a really impressive story, Angela. It's a pleasure to see you again and, and get together and hopefully thank we can do it again me. real soon so thank you for coming and joining us today absolutely cheers thank thanks you. Take care. <clears throat> all right then so thank you again to both of our customers in the form of cheryl and also angela just great um, customer stories and so just to, to wrap things up then We've talked about the shifting role of IT and this demand in the industry for IT to take on a different role moving forward and really focusing in on how do we drive tangible business results with the investments that we make around technology. And of course, we believe Slack can play a key role in that. And then we offered up a, a value framework for you to think about how you might align Slack to your, your key company objectives. But the key takeaway from all of this is if you can align Slack to those key company objectives, you will see results. And hopefully, we've given you food for thought across these three customer journeys and customer examples to help you think about how you might do that within your own organization. So all of that said, looking ahead, again, in the opportunity track, we have a lot of exciting topics and sessions planned for you over the next two days. There's going to be best practice sharing. There's going to be focus on product roadmap. So please check out those sessions. Outside of the sessions, though, there's also great opportunities for learning. And the two I'd point out here is that there's an admin meetup today at 12.15, so check that out. And then out on the expo floor, stop by the admin booth for some additional tips and tricks to get the most value from your Slack implementation. So thank you for joining us today and helping me kick off the opportunity track, and have a great rest of your frontiers.